Hey, this is Dean Pleasants from Suicidal. This is Thundercat. <laughs> and you're listening to Bay Area Rocks. Because you better rock on. Bay Area Rocks. The Bay Area does rock. <laughs> you're watching Bay Area Rocks, and I'm Basie Stacy, and I'm here with the guys from Suicidal Tendencies. They just played a killer show at the Phoenix Theater, and tonight they're at the Fillmore in San Francisco. Say what's up, guys, and introduce yourselves. Hi. My name is Steven Bruner, and I'm of the basis for Suicidal Tendencies, also affectionately known as Thundercat. <laughs> nice. Hi, I'm Dean, Dean O. Pleasance, and uh, here with Suicidal. I also play with Infectious Grooves, and did Jimi Hendrix play in here? I don't know. Yeah, I think he... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about Infectious Grooves, too, while we're at it, since uh, you guys are also playing the House of Blues soon. When are you playing there? Uh, we're playing on the 23rd, I believe it is. So, and I'm looking forward to that, because... Uh, Infectious hasn't played in Los Angeles in a long time, so going to bring the funk and the punk to the people. Hopefully it'll be a good turnout, and, you know, I'm really excited about being able to do that. Right on. Do you have new material for that, or are you guys just sticking with the oldies but goodies? We're going to, you know, rebaptize the crowd with some old stuff, but we have some surprises, so I can't give it out. Like a little surprise cake, like Steven got yesterday. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was your birthday yesterday. How was your birthday playing in the Phoenix Theater in Petaluma? Oh, it was neither here nor there. It was great. Awesome. So how long have you been with Suicidal Tendencies? Um, ever since I could walk. <laughs> Basically, no, actually, I joined the band when I was around 16 or 17 years old, like right when I got into high school. And uh, basically, you know, all through high school I was traveling. The other reason why I didn't graduate on time. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I actually graduated early or whatever, but. That's it, and I'm, I'm actually really smart. You just, you know, it just, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so. Well, you guys just played a killer show last night, so I'm sure you're a little bit, you know, chilling before the show tonight and everything like that. So can I ask how old you are now? 26. Awesome. So what kind of bass gear do you play through? Oh, well, usually I play SWR, uh, two sets of 410s, and SWR 750X head. And, yes, I endorse SWR. <coughs> and um, also, right now, I've been working with Ibanez a lot. They've been making me a couple of instruments that are really, really interesting. And, um, you know, I'm getting warming up to them and all of that. And um, that's basically it. I have a six-string uh, Michael Tobias uh, design bass, an MTD bass, that's actually a custom-made instrument. And... Um, it's awesome as the Thundercat on it. Oh, nice. That's so cool. What is your fascination with Thundercat while we're on that subject? Oh, that's a perfect question. Um, <laughs> the whole thing with Thundercats, uh, it's kind of like when I was a kid, I was really obsessed with it. And um, my mom used to hate it. You know, she used to hate that I was so obsessed with it. Like, you know, I would be doing all kind of crazy stuff. I like being in my garage eating my cat's food. My mom caught me eating the cat's food one time and beat the yeah, crap out of me. Kind of stuff. I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I tell people that. Well, if, it, <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, my sister made me eat a dog biscuit once. It was kind of like a dare. You know, yeah, we've yeah. all tasted a dog biscuit yeah. before. Yeah. I had a dog you don't biscuit taste too. So bad, you know. Right. So like, you know? Yeah, I had a dog biscuit. Cool. In Vietnam, I'm pretty sure we'd even be eating Alpo. <laughs> nice. No, but, uh, yeah, so it kind of traveled over the way it did because I kind of look to it as a source of uh, helps me to – it makes me feel more comfortable creatively. You know, it's like I lean on it as a character, you know, something that people can relate to. Definitely. So it's like it, that's what it is for me now. But when I was a kid, it was like my mom, she wouldn't buy me the toys. She was like, if I buy you the toys, you're probably going to worship them. And it's like <laughs> now I have it like – Yeah, it's like now it's all tattooed all over my body and stuff. And so my mom goes, oh, my God. Yeah, you even have the jacket. I saw the jacket that you were wearing the other, the first time I met you, actually, yeah. over at the Voodoo Lounge. And what? <laughs> yeah, th there it is again. <laughs> so, what what kind of guitar gear do you play through? What do you play through? Me on this tour, I'm using VHT uh, Pitbull heads and VHT cabinet, and uh, I use Fernandez guitars. I've been with Fernandez for years. Um, they're good to me. I like their guitars. They're powerful. They're great for punk rock funk rock everything you know just cool um you know they've been loyal to me so i'm loyal to them you know but um yeah the vhts really scream i have to turn them down actually so you know good amps great for suicidal awesome and you guys just came back from uh didn't you play a festival in brazil and chile can you tell me a little bit about that yeah that was that was crazy it was you know we went over there with uh 
It was a little bit of controversy at first, but we made it through. We were there with Rage Against the Machine, Mars Volta, and uh, it was insane. It was, yeah, it was great shows. Everybody played incredible. Rage, you know, they had a great crowd, incredible performance they, they put together, uh, you know, and uh, Mars Volta and us. It was just a really good build. I think South America was definitely happy with us. It was like, you know, Rage Against the Machine is like one of my favorite bands in the world, and they they tore it up, man. It was like before they even went on stage, like <laughs> everybody was going yeah, ape doo doo. They were going crazy. What was the festival called over there? Was it in Brazil or? You know, I don't even know what happened 15 minutes ago. I couldn't tell you what that is. <laughs> Do you remember the name of the festival? No. no okay. Sure. You guys. You guys. Call it awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome well, I, I know that over there in South America, they're really hungry, especially for great music, yeah. metal, punk, everything like that. You know. So. <laughs> but um, so you just started your guys' this tour, and where are you headed next on this tour? The city of lost wages. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not a gambler. No. But yeah, uh, you know, Las Vegas, everybody's favorite. Viva Las Vegas. I like Elvis. He was cool. Um, <laughs> Wayne Newton, that guy. Um, so, yeah, we're headed there. And then after that, I don't know. I, I'm a day-to-day person, you know. If you ask me what time it is, I'll be looking around for the... Yeah, there's a clock. Actually, it's it's 5 after 8. Uh, yeah. But I kind of just, you know, live in the moment, day-to-day, um, on tour, that is. Not at home. I'm home. I'm all business. But when you're here, you get into... You really have to get into a routine of, you know playing and like just taking care of yourself being health healthy and the main thing is you're always chasing sleep so you know we I, we, we don't really have a tour book on this one so we're just kind of like so basically, I don't know yeah we're day. like lost in space like the spaceship just kind of planet going. to planet yeah we don't know what's going that's on that's what managers are for right you know yeah, so you don't have to pay attention for to that Usually, stuff you would think that right <laughs> 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 so you guys have new material that you're working on now. Can you tell us exactly what the m- new material is about and um, you know how it's going and when the new record's going to come out and everything like that? Well, yes. As you know, we just released No Mercy, and we're on touring right now off that record, No Mercy, Suicidal Army. But as far as a new suicidal record, we have material we've been working on in the studio, and hopefully with the right setup and the right timing, because, as you know, record companies and record business and the record industry itself is in a bit of disarray. Right. So for bands like us who are more on the independent underground side, <clears throat> it's very important to have the right timing of a release and the right setup. So right now, we're hoping to kind of build off of this tour. And, and, you know, each thing we do, we want it to be important, kind of build up. And we're trying to get reach people on this tour that we, you know, may have known us from years ago, even before I was in the band, and people that are just getting into us and kind of build their family back up so we can have a release on, on new stuff because, you know, we really want it to be heard. Really and yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have no problems with that. Um, so when did you actually join the band? I, I didn't get that answer from you. I joined the band in uh, 96, 97, but I was in another group called Infectious Grooves Ooh. with Mike in 1990. <laughs> so... Um, I knew Mike already, and uh, you know I had been in a band with Robert before he was in Suicidal, and uh, and all that Ozzy and Metallica and the whole thing. So I always, always, always kind of knew Clark and those guys, and Mike, you know, asked me to join Suicidal, and I felt honored, and you know had a lot of big shoes to fill, as you know Rocky George, incredible guitar player and incredible soloist, and was a pioneer in what he did, especially in Suicidal, you know. Being, you know, not to be funny, but one of the few black guys playing punk rock, and and uh, you know, the same with Luigi. I mean, it was it was a it was a very diverse band. You had you know Latin, black, white, the whole thing, and 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 it wasn't a lot of bands like that doing punk rock. So they were very you know influential as far as the whole Venice thing and the, and the way they looked, and even on with rappers who started dressing like the way they did with the flannel shirts and the bandanas. Nobody was doing that. So for me. Like I said, going, like, you know, spinning it back, like, being in the band, you know, for me, I took it upon myself to really practice hard and to really try to have my own style and to reach the fans in a different way, because I can't 
be Rocky, but I can also I can be me. But I can show them like this is why this dude's in the band. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Putting your own flavor into it right. and everything right. like that. Right. Speaking of Rocky and Robert, have you seen Rocky and Fishbone yet? Yes, we had the pleasure of playing with Fishbone a few times in Europe uh, a few years back, and also in the States uh, just like a year ago. And uh, you know, Rocky's got a huge afro. I know, I yeah. saw that. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was it was fun to see him always. You know, he's a good guy, and I'm glad he's playing. I'm glad he still gets to be on stage, and people can see him. And <laughs> as far as Robert, I talked to Robert uh, a few years ago. He called me before he got Metallica, and uh, he's been in touch with Mike. And you know, he's still the same Robert. Just he always wanted to do something like that, and I'm glad he got his wish. I mean, I'm so happy for. I'm the kind of person. I'm very non-egotistical non I like to see everybody working playing because to me I think music has so much to offer through every individual you know what I mean it's not a competition it's a, it's an art form I agree you know? yeah. yeah I definitely think that that's one thing great about music it joins everybody together and especially if you take out the ego and um, it's about emotion and definitely it's about, you know, being a team. So, you know, even though people go their separate ways or whatever else. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not talking about Capitol Records. Just, kid, just kidding, Capitol. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, speaking of, like, the lyrics and everything um, with Suicidal Tendencies, I have to say that, you know, how will I laugh tomorrow when I can't even smile today or any of the, like, you can't bring me down you know that kind of a message you know i know you, that you know back in the day that they you know mike has gotten a lot of flack for being called suicidal tendencies and a lot of negative things about his anger or whatever but for me personally he's helped me through a lot you know just with the lyrics and everything in a positive way and i just want to say that like you know how has it helped you in your guys's um lives playing with them and everything playing with mike? well now we're headbands. That's <laughs> something I never did before. Uh-huh. No, I'm <laughs> no it, actually, I've you know grown a lot hanging around Mike, especially Mike and Dean. You know, it's like they've been like big brothers to me, and it's kind of like you know it's been very influential in making helping me to understand my own voice a little better. You know, it's like a lot of people, like you said, they look at the name suicidal and they get all freaked out and they think that it's like this horrible thing. But I asked Mike one day what he meant by that. And it was like, you know, it was just doing what you believe to death, basically. And it was like, OK, I was like, wow, I never knew that. You know, it was like it was it means a lot more than just what you would think of it off the top. You know, so having understood that and also just having been around, you know, uh, such wise cats, they're really wise, you know, and um it's just been very influential in my growing up. So, you got to remember, I joined the band when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you're still a kid. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a little thunder kitten. <laughs> so, working on the new material and stuff like that, what are some of the song subjects? Do you, Can you share those with us? Or do you have a album title you're working on now? Or We don't, we don't really have a title. You know, um, Mike writes all the lyrics and stuff. We do the music. Um... All I can say is this. It's very much like the old school suicidal. The way it was recorded, the way it was done with, you know, everybody getting to really shine at what they do. Mike Clark on the rhythm, myself with solos, Steve on his Thundercat bass. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, his brother actually played on, on a lot of the stuff, too. Ronald did, um, as well as, you know, Eric Moore on a couple of new things. But um, the recordings, we kind of found a really good formula for doing stuff suicidal and infectious had kind of got close at one point and it was time to separate them again you know and um so the new material we're working on now is really just suicidal it's just straight hardcore like the old school and mike still has a lot to say so i think you know as far as lyrics and stuff you'll hear you know Mike can always make you think, and that's the one thing he's been really good at, like you said, helping people. You know, there's always a situation in life that you may think nobody else has encountered it, and, and you may feel alone, and then you hear a, a, a lyric in a song, and you go, oh, I'm not alone. And that really helps people get through things, you know, in a, as a really positive way, you know. And I think Mike has always been able to tap into that, you know. So I think the new stuff will have that kind of stuff in there. 
Great. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for your time because I know that you're going to get ready to play pretty soon. And I really, yeah, what time? Where's my manager? (laughs) But I really appreciate your, you know, your time and interviewing with Bay Area Rocks. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll see you again soon. And I'm going to go rock out and hopefully be in the pit tonight. But I wore my heels. So because last night I got a big bruise. (laughs) But I got to get up on stage, which was awesome for last night and everything like that. So you're watching Bay Area Rocks and Suicidal Tendencies at the Fillmore.